theme today, which is based on learning quantum, learning quantum computing by playing quantum games. It's a big initiative in the US at the moment. It's been very popular there and they've had, we've just had, you may or may not know, World Quantum Day and the US is celebrating that and they put a lot of money into teaching teenagers specifically, but anybody, but you know, teenagers specifically by using quantum games. And now forgive me because I've got to check phone and iPad and everything as we're live and I'm here on my own. <laughs> but look, it's so exciting because we at Quequa, and by the way, Eamon Doss is my name. I should have said I'm the founder and operator of Quequa, the quantum education center of Western Australia. And today really is all about looking at, uh, just a message there, someone's coming, looking at what's happening in America and what's happening to America where it comes to quantum games. Let's see what they're doing. Excellent. So there's a, a, a big initiative, and I may add that these games are being written by the cream of the crop. These are the top quantum uh, the theoretical physicists, scientists in the US from Caltech, you know, Harvard, the um, executive operational managers at Google AI. Now, we all know AI and artificial intelligence is, you know, the next big thing, if not the current big thing. Forget AI, it's now QAI, quantum artificial intelligence, because you wouldn't dream of doing um, AI on a normal computer but now because it's it's got to be quantum because it's so much... Um, there's so much of a speed up, literally in the thousands of millions times quicker in some procedures. It all depends on the procedures. Um, quantum computers are exceptionally good at simulation and optimization. Um, they really can do things that it's mind boggling what they can do. And this game will show you not only can they actually computate a factor of thousands of millions times quicker, they can do a quantum computer can do computations that we don't understand. And believe it or not, um, Tonight, we're going to um, go over the rules of the game so that you can come and join us on May the 3rd. Um, please go to YouTube or Facebook and type in Quequa, Q-U-E-C-W-A, and then join the group or subscribe to the channel and you will get this live feed. And um, on the 3rd of May at 6 o'clock Perth time, so that's Perth, Western Australian time, we're going to be live streaming uh, this game. And there's going to be a number of players from around the world playing this game. 
Now, don't worry. I'm going to give you the rules of the game very shortly. Um, just hold on. Lorraine's come from. Uh, Lorraine, Lorraine, can you hear me? Hello, Lorraine, can you hear me? Hello, Lorraine, can you hear me? Excuse me, everybody. Yes, we... uh... Oh, you can. Excellent. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. So good of you because I know you're going on a road trip today. So it's very good of you to join us. So everybody in West Australia, thank you. Lorraine Majiri is the president of One Quantum Africa. And she's um, oh, she's doing some great stuff, learning yeah. Python, et cetera, et cetera. It's uh, very exciting. And Lorraine is going to be one of our uh, referees. And she's going to, uh, I was just talking about the games that we're going to have throughout the world. We're going to have games uh, being played in Malaysia, uh, Zimbabwe, India, the United States, the UK, and Australia. So we, we've got many. Oh, hi, Lorraine. I've got you back. Um, we have many uh, games set up from around the world and uh, many uh, referees to control the games. Now you can join us and play the game. All you need is pen and paper. It's like playing Norton Crosses or Tic Tac Toe. It is, um, it, it's quite amazing. So, uh, and this is all going to be happen on May the 3rd, six o'clock in the evening, Perth time. Lorraine, would the, can I leave you to, would you like to say a few words about what you're doing in Africa, in one quantum Africa with respect to um, uh, quantum computing? I'll, uh, I'll leave it with you for a few minutes. Right. Um, thank you very much. Um, Iman has already mentioned uh, my name, but anyways, I'll repeat my name is uh, Lorraine Titsu Majiri. I'm from Zimbabwe. I'm the one quantum Africa president. Um, I'm happy to be here, and I'm also very excited about games um, that I joined quantum. I wasn't exposed to, to games, so this is a very exciting um, movement for me to, to learn more about quantum through games. So in Africa, we are working on building um, a community. We are hoping to be more established with um, in other countries. So far in Africa, we have 10 chapters in different local chapters in different countries. Um, for example, in Zimbabwe, Libya, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, and so on. So we have local chapters where we can, where people can meet and collaborate locally in their own um, quantum communities. We also focus on careers. We try to create opportunities for other um, Africans in, in the quantum ecosystem. So we have a careers platform where people can submit their resumes and then um, we forward them to, and then different companies across the globe have access to them. And that way we have um, others getting access to it. We also have a mentorship program where I've been a mentee, which has, which has been amazing. You get to learn a lot from soft skills to quantum technology. It's a whole wide range. Um, and we have a community where we just meet as, as a continent to, to talk about us in quantum, to talk about um, such interesting topics. One of them now is definitely going to be about quantum games um, after seeing the amazing work that Iman has done with it. So, very looking forward to it and I hope and look forward to the African community also joining in on this. Oh, beautifully said. Thank you, Lorraine. And how many, uh, one quantum, how many people do you have around the whole world? No, uh, you know, how many in one quantum Africa? How many members roughly in one? Because one quantum 
is an American company. Is that true? Yes, it's a, it's a global organization. Yeah. Do you know how many members you've got globally? I mean, it's, it's very major. Well, I can't put a number to it because so um, there are so many local chapters now that we have established. So to know how many I need, yes. chapter might be a bit difficult because also I have regions like we are now even in Asia. Also, I have regions of Latin America. We have Canada. So it's hard to put a, a number to it, but um, we have grown very much over the last two years and. Um, Hopefully, we are continuing to grow. So I don't have a number to it exactly, but no, we are pretty big. Yeah, it, it, look, I, as you know, I, I know, um, I was about to say I know him very well, and now I can't remember his name. <laughs> the Canadian <laughs> guy or who's in charge of it, I can't remember his name. But we've got Denise Rothner. She yes, is yes, she's so still with me. Yeah, she's, um, yeah, she was the vice president of INQ, which is one of the major quantum startups uh, globally. So they do track dying. So, oh, honestly, I just want anybody out there watching this. And if you know nothing about quantum computing, you will, on the 3rd of May, play a game which will open your eyes in fact, Lorraine, I don't think you had me say this, but oh, I can actually excuse me a second. I just oh, that's no, okay. Um, Lorraine, it's not um, quantum computers can do certain calculations millions of times quicker than the fastest computers and supercomputers of today, even though they operate at the speed of light. But what this game showed is that. Quantum computers can do things that we can't do. Like this game, and, and don't worry, I'm going to put the rules of the game up. And there's only about th three or four rules. It's very easy to follow, but we can show you, and we will show you very quickly, how you can't win this game. All the mathematics we've learned in 2,000 years, all the maths and physics, you can't win this game. Um, you always lose, and the more you play, the more you end up losing. And we, can dem we will demonstrate that to you why that is so. Yet, a quantum computer can, can actually um can actually do a calculation by using different realities now i know this is beginning to sound crazy and please don't think we are all scientists this is science but it is like you know um, lorraine i'm talking about superposition and the different realities of superposition allow us to do allow us to win this game what do you think uh, Lorraine? i think it's absolutely amazing the opportunities that this game has the whole field that um this game portrays um, about increasing your chances of winning every time a whole new view to things which is new and it's amazing yes well couldn't agree more what I might do now is uh, go over the rules of the game, if that's all right with you, Lorraine. Uh, yes. uh, our, uh, Lorraine, sorry, I should have said, Lorraine's one of the referees for next um, May the 3rd, 6 o'clock uh, Perth time in the evening, which is midday for you, Lorraine, I think. Yes. Yes. And have you got people ready to play the game? Yes, I have. Uh, I have some friends ready to represent us. Yeah, well, I'm sure they're going to say to you, oh, I don't believe you can win this every time. But um, the reality is that uh, Lorraine's one of the referees and we've got Anne Backus from CSIRO Palsy. 
CSIRO is a very big government run scientific organization in Western Australia where we are all, and Anne will be joining us in about 10 to 15 minutes. And she's one of the referees, but she's also uh, an, an educator and trainer in quantum computing. And she will, uh, on the night, give uh, all the rules for everybody. But I'm going to play the official video from America. Now, remember, please, all all the teenagers out there in Zimbabwe with Lorraine and, and, and here with me and in India, Malaysia, UK, US, wherever you're watching from, the teenagers in the US are being taught this stuff. And, and we're behind. So we really, this is very important. And it's very exciting. So let me... Let's have a run through of uh, the instructions and I'll play this again later. So let's see. And a referee. Here's how to play. The game is played on a three by three grid. The blue side fills a random row of their grid with an even number of ones. The red side fills a random column of their grid with an odd number of ones. The referee is responsible for generating the random row and column in each round. The referee checks if the intersecting square. Oh, sorry about that. I was checking something else, so let's. Square is matching. Mm -hmm. If sorry. not, the team is eliminated. Here is an example of one round. The referee generates the random number three. The blue side fills in the third row with an even number of ones. They choose the sequence 0, 1, 1, which contains two ones, so it is even. The referee documents the blue side's move on their own sheet. Next, the referee generates the random number 3. The red side fills in the third column with an odd number of 1s. They choose the sequence 010, which contains a single 1, so it is odd. The referee documents the red side's move. They check the intersecting square for a match or mismatch. In this case, the numbers do not match. The group has lost this round and is eliminated. Let's try another round. The referee generates the random number one. The blue side fills in the first row. They choose 110. The referee documents this move. The referee now generates the random number two. The red side fills in the second column. They choose 111, an odd number of ones. The referee documents this move and checks the intersecting square. This time, the numbers match. The students win this round and continue to the next round. If at least three of the four groups can survive without being eliminated after four rounds, the students win. It is now time for you to begin. Okay. So um yeah that's the game and as you can see there's only a couple of things lorraine would you like to give us a quick rundown of the game and then i can add, add something if needs be all right um so we have um the game comprises of two teams the blue and the red that's what we will call them the blue and the red team so each team is assigned will pick odd or even numbers so if we assign the red team even then it means in their on their sheet they are only supposed to have an even number of ones um so that could either be zero one one or it could be one zero one whichever format they would want to use and for the blue team they would be having odd numbers so that can be zero zero one or one 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 so we could assign the red team to fill in to be having the rows and the blue team to be having the columns such that when now the referee is going to generate a random number the referee will pick a row from according to the random numbers not just randomly from the random number generated um will pick the row from the red team and the column from the blue team and look at the intersection point 
if we look at the intersection point, if there is a zero from both teams, um, then it means the students win. But if the, it does not match, there is a zero and one, then it means the students lose and are eliminated from the round. Thank you, Lorraine. Beautifully said. That's exactly right. So note the ref, what the referee is doing. So um, you've got, it doesn't matter what, what, what the colors are, but you've got, let's say the blue team can only do the rows and the number of ones must be even. So that's one rule. Um, so there are four combinations when you think about it. So it's, you know, you've got, um, yeah, when it's even, you've got zero. It's, so it's an even number of ones. You've got zero, zero, zero. Think of going along the row. You've got zero, zero, zero. That's even. You know, there's no ones. So it's called even. Then you've got one, one, zero. That's even because you've got two ones. Then you've got one, zero, one. That's even because there's two ones. And then zero, one, one. And that's even because you've got two ones. So you've got four choices, but you don't get to choose what line, you, what, what row you go in in the grid, whether it's the top, middle or bottom one. As Lorraine says, that is determined by a roll of the dice or it's a random number from the referee. And that's important because that's bringing probability into it. Then if you've got red doing the columns and they've got to be odd, then uh, they will be uh, one, well, they will be zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 because they are all an odd number of ones. So they're the four choices that the red team can make. Now, they, uh, again, they choose one of those four, and then the referee randomly comes up with a number and puts them in. Uh, puts the numbers in whatever row, whether it's one is the top row, two is the middle, and three is the bottom. So can you see how it's random? Um, Lorraine, we might talk about collaboration. What collaboration can the teams do? Can they collaborate before the start of the game? Yes, the teams are allowed um, three minutes before the game to both teams to come up with a strategy that they might want to use so that they could win. They could decide that on whatever case it be. Maybe the red team might be might fill in their middle row with ones only. That could be, as an example, a strategy. But the teams are allowed to come up with, with a strategy before the game begins. But once the games begin, they cannot discuss any strategy. Right. So they can say, like, let's say you and I are playing, I'm blue and you're red. I could say to you, we could talk to each other and collaborate. And I could say, okay, Lorraine, I'm going to put 111. See, I can't say what row I'm going to go in, but I can say, I'm going to use all the ones. So if you use as many ones as you can, we're going to have the best chance of that intersecting row being with both ones. That's a typical strategy, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so that's um, interesting. But again, we can talk about that before the game. But as soon as the ref says, right, we're starting the game, then Lorraine has to go into a different room or I have to go. We're all, we're all in different countries, so it's not going to matter. Oh, you know, so they have to, they can't collaborate anymore. But they... They've already agreed what numbers they're going to use. I'm going to use 111, and Lorraine is going to use 110. But 
we, we don't know what rows they're going to go in. So let me show you why that matters. Okay, can you see that, Lorraine? Yes. The grid, fantastic, right. Now, you see, this is a game you, you can win eight-ninths of the time. So that means, because you see, if you look at this grid here, remember the rule. The rows have to be an even number of ones, and the columns have to be an odd number of rows. Now, the problem is, eight out of nine is fantastic, but if you look at that row at the bottom right, if I put a zero in that, uh, Lorraine, maybe you can explain this, if you put a zero in. Um, if we put a zero in, then we have broken one of the rules. I've mentioned that the rows are supposed to have even numbers of ones. So once you put a zero, it means that we have an odd number of ones. Okay, let's put a one in then. Does that solve the problem? Um, if we put a one, it means in the columns we now have an even number of ones when we want an odd number of ones in the columns, although in the row it would be correct. That's why she's president. She's so clever. But it's exactly right. There will always be one, and we call these intersecting boxes. So remember, when you play the game, and play it with your friends now, all you need is pen and paper. And there will, be, there will always be one out of the nine squares. If that's the intersecting square, then it will always be, it won't match. Remember, you win. You win if you, if you both put in zero or you both put in one. You lose if you have one has a one and one has a zero. So that's going to happen at ninth of the time. Um, I'm just showing you, yeah, so there's the optimal strategy. So you see, the chances of winning one game is eight ninths. And so the chance of winning four games is eight ninths to the fourth um so the exponent four which equals 62 percent so what we're going to do on may the third at 6 p.m please remember go to youtube type in quequa and join that group go to facebook type in quequa q u e CWA, the Quantum Education Center of West Australia. And then you'll be able to see the games happening live. And the, the, the way we win the game overall is if the four countries who are playing the game, if we have um, at least two of them at the end of four rounds. Now you get eliminated as soon as you have a different number, you're eliminated. So I hope you're, you're following that. Lorraine, would you like to say a couple of words? Um. <clears throat> I'm really just looking forward to the game. It's it's very exciting. Um, I feel like games are a very good way to learn, um, especially for the young ones. Um, I've also been trying to play this this game with, with my nieces. I'm sure you've seen it running um, big. They're trying to crawl around behind me. But um, she's eight and I'm trying to help her, you know, to just get the classical way of it. And her sister was also 14. So... It, it's very exciting to them and now they're curious how they can win every time because they are looking forward and thinking oh, if there's a way to pitch every time then they want to go for it so i'm just looking forward to the games 
That's fantastic. They must be thinking, how could you possibly win every game? And, and that's what we're saying. Um, look, I know it's all a bit new to you if you're watching this for the first time, but basically you can't win it in the classical world. But in the quantum world, by using special quantum forces, we can actually, using a thing called superposition. So what we're going to do is we're going to play this, the games around the world on the 3rd of May. And I'm, I'm then going to explain how you can win it in the quantum world and then you know we may have to do a short course or something if you want to understand you know superposition and quantum entanglement and these are the strange forces that we've known about for a hundred years but we we we, we you know einstein all the greatest scientists ever just cannot work out how it works uh, Lorraine maybe you could give us a quick uh, description of what quantum entanglement is so <clears throat> entanglement is um, well I like to use the example of gloves because that's that was the first example I got that if I have a box and, and we have um, a pair of gloves. If I have one and I somewhat send another one to Iman, um, where he is, then if he opens the box, if I have a right a glove from the right hand, if Iman opens his box, he'll see um, a glove from the other hand and he'll know that it's 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 from the left hand. So in, in, in layman's and simple using gloves that would be in entanglement. Exactly. I mean, it, 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 entanglement is the biggest mystery in our universe at the moment. You can get uh, quantum just means subatomic, basically. So anything smaller than an atom. And we're made of quantum particles we are quantum objects i could take a quantum particle out of lorraine and a quantum particle out of me and you can entangle them in a very simple process and then i could you know uh, transport it to the moon and this is something a million million times smaller than a speck of dust and one particle's here on earth one particle's on the moon. And as soon as I push this one a bit to the left, the one on the moon goes a little bit to the left. Now, how can that be? How can the subatomic particle on the moon, a million, 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 many times smaller than the speck of dust, how can it know that a particle has just moved here on Earth? and it happens all the time it's um einstein famously called it spooky action at a distance but he could never say what was happening he tried he actually denounced it he knew it was happening but he said look it's not quantum magic it's just that our knowledge isn't good enough yet to determine the left and right in Lorraine's example. But um, John Bell in the 1960s proved, and it's been double checked a thousand times, but he proved there wasn't a hidden variable. And he also proved what happens defies all mathematics, all the, just like this game. All the mathematics we've ever known and learned, quantum entanglement goes beyond that. And that really is just amazing. And the amazing thing 
is that we can write computer programs using these forces. In fact, Lorraine, you're beginning, you're learning quantum programming at the moment, aren't you? With Qiskit. Yes. Yeah, and um, can you tell us a bit about how what Qiskit is and just a few words on um, Qiskit? Right, um, so Qiskit is, um, and it's it's an online platform. They have their platform named um, um, IBM Experience, where you can create your account and then you can code um, your code there, and then you can run it on a on a quantum computer. Um, also, another great um, platform is is Qubraid, where they have also integrated Qiskit, Sec. Um, bracket, which is also amazing, so that you can just, you know, when you want to get your fingers dirty, you can just explore all the various um, type of languages that are there. So it's also another great platform to learn. So um, I say so sorry um, about that, Lorraine. I've just had a text <laughs> from Anne, so she will be joining us in a few minutes, hopefully. So sorry about that. So, um, did you say bracket? Is this what's the biggest competitor to Kiskit? I'm not um, very sure. I know I've been no. ex the ones that I've been exposed to are Cirque. Um, mm. and also bracket. I'm still new at um, using Qubit because for Qubit they have all those in one place, so it's easier to experiment and you know just try to learn all of them. Excellent. Uh, thanks very much, Lorraine. And we have Anne Bacchus. Oh, oh just hold on one second. Oh yeah. No, Hi, Lorraine. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi, Evan. Hi, Anne. Lovely to see you. I know you've dashed back home so that you can join us. We've um, uh, just been talking about the whole different platforms and the rules of the game. Um, in fact, I might, for your benefit, Anne, just quickly play the video on the rules of the game. And then you can tell us, you know, why we can never win and all that sort of stuff. Oh, I know the rules of the game, but I don't know why I can't win. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me play the rules of the game for you, and then you give us our, the interpretation, OK? OK. Oh, I can't find it now. Sorry. For some reason, the um Video is not coming through on that, and I don't want to make it too difficult for everybody else. So, all right, then, and well, could you explain the game to us? It's probably better coming from you. I just thought I'd help by playing that video. So, over to you, Anne. Okay, um, unrehearsed. So, the goal of the game is to have if you've got a um, not a three by three grid. And the goal of the game is to get the same number, a zero or a one, in one of the square, squares where they overlap. So let's say two people are playing and um, I'm the referee and Lorraine, you're a participant and Eamon, you're a participant. Mm -hmm. So um, 
you get to use zeros or ones only, and you get three numbers, right? So any combination of the zeros and ones. However, Eamon is going to be doing rows, and Lorraine, you'll be doing columns. And so in the rows, they have to be an even number. Good guess. <laughs> even number in the rows. Yes. And um, so that means an even number of ones. So that means, um, Eamon, what would that mean if you needed to have an even number of ones going yes. across your row? How many ones do you need in those three columns? Yeah, you need either none, so zero, 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 or two. Correct. Great. Now, so that's going across. Now, yeah, Lorraine, right. you are going up and down, and you can you have to have an odd number of ones. So when you're putting your numbers in there, you can only you have to make sure you have an odd number of ones. So what might that look like? What configurations might you do? So that could be three ones, or it could just be a single one. Correct. Like one, one, one. Perfect. And remember, the goal is to like get that overlapping number with Amon. So in one of the cells. Now, how do you know which row or which column you're going to be? Um, you're going to be putting your numbers in. You don't. That's yeah. the beauty of it because I have all the power here. Yeah. I am going to well, not, always. <laughs> not really, it's all luck. So I'm going to throw a throw a dice, and then that will be the row that Eamon can put his numbers in, his even number of ones in there, and the other boxes are zeros. And then you can't see this though. You don't know where he's putting that. And so then I'm gonna throw the dice again. And then that will be the column, one, two, or three, that you're going to put your odd number of ones and the rest are zeros in that column. And then after you both do it separately, so you don't know what each other's doing, we're going to put them together and see if where they cross, either here or down here or in the middle, do they have the same number in there? And the goal is to have that same number in the middle, a zero or a one. But can we get it? Therein lies the challenge. Indeed. Oh, you, you explained that so well. I really, I knew you would as well. I like the way you say the goal of the game at the beginning, because whenever I explain it to someone, I keep saying it's very simple, and then I explain it, and the goal, <laughs> you know, I, I'm all over the show, and nobody can follow it. But um, interesting, I just like, to, oh, yeah, if you can see that, Anne, Yep. The, the reason why you can only win eight ninths of the time on the first game, and from then on you just keep your chances of losing, just carry on. Whereas a quantum computer can win every time and forever. But And the reason, I, I like this graphic here because it shows if you follow the even and the odd rule, there will always be one square that you can't fill in. Because if I put a zero there, then I, oh, so you can't see what I'm doing. In the bottom right-hand corner, if I put a zero in there, then the columns are okay, but the rows are wrong because the rows are odd. And if, ah, yes, yes. Yes, and if I put a one there, then the rows are fine because they're even, but unfortunately the columns are even. Uh, uh, Lorraine yeah. was ex explaining this earlier, so yeah. That's, oh, wow, that's, that's great. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? So, you know, that shows. Oh, that, now it's gone. <laughs> Oh, do I, I can put it back if you want. I want to write it down because yeah, like... yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, that that's really explains why you can't yeah, win. Yeah, so you're saying that that means there's only an 
eight out of nine chance of willing winning around yes and you could obviously change the row, mm -hmm. rows around and all that and there'll always be one square so it's not always the bottom right hand corner right, but there'll right. always be one square that the last one you go to fill out <laughs> that can't be both now that is beyond dispute no one can disagree with that in our world although you know me and i like to say when we talk i always say we talk about the real world and the quantum world the quantum world is the real world all these funny things like entanglement and superposition that's what our universe that's how nature reacts and that's what our universe is we, we are emergent properties and you know so we emerged no, how 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 we've done it and no one knows but as a species we exist and we can only tap into so much of the universe anything to add to that Anne, or no i'm just writing down your quote we are emergent properties because i have heard humans described as many things but never an emergent no. property that's exactly well if you come to dinner in my place and then you'll hear it many many times because <laughs> i say that many many times it's yeah we are we we're emergent we're not fundamental in fact an atom is emergent this universe was not created fund with fundamentally with atoms but it was to the best of our knowledge fully create it was we have fundamentally nature and the universe is made of quantum particles and quantum theory is easily the most accurate theory in the world it's to 13 places um accuracy so if you wanted to when we landed on the moon we were i don't know 20 yards away from where we were supposed to land obviously no one cares that's well done everybody if that was quantum computing you'd land to within a millimeter you know so when we work out if you throw a projectile with all our classical physics we would work it out to four decimal places and be very happy with that 13 is only in the quantum and that's because our universe is quantum the best explanation we have for the fabric of our universe the fabric of the cosmos is quantum and we don't understand it and it's strange because we may well soon have computers that run society and everything and we don't understand how they work what do you think? Any comment, Lorraine? I'm just amazed and still absorbing all that wonderful yeah. information. <laughs> yeah, so when people ask me, uh, I talk to them about how quantum computers are so much faster. Um, I hate to gloss over this, but if you use an ATM, at the moment it's so safe, no one will get your pin. It takes, if they got the transaction and a hacker tried to hack it, it would take them literally four and a half thousand million years to get your pin. So you're totally safe. But a quantum computer can get it in six seconds. So we're talking about that speed update. But I explain to people it's not all about speed and this it's about different realities different dimensions that the quantum can tap into and this game shows it beautifully it's based on a game called the chsh game which is very much more complex but you can have very many more strategies but no matter how you do it you can only ever win 75 percent of the time um i forgot during my during my um description of the game yeah. to talk about that you 
and Lorraine could talk and strategize about how you want to do it. Mm. But once I throw that first dice, then you can't talk to each other. That's exactly right. We, uh, I thought you mentioned that, but maybe not. Mm. No. Yeah, that's exactly right. So um, there aren't many strategies, though, are there, Lorraine? Have you, <laughs> my strategy, Anne, for, for the sake of it is I, the row person use all the, uh, no, the column person use all the ones, and the row person use as many ones as it can, which is two, and then yeah. your chances are high. If you, I think you said to me today, Anne, if you select zero, 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 and one, 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 then you'll never, ever, ever win. Yes. And it's the same sort of logic reversed. But the, the CHSH game is very complex, but it, it, you have real, real strategies that mean something. Whereas here, the strategy, the only thing about this game is the strategies aren't so good, but that doesn't matter. You can still clearly see by this diagram here, you can clearly see that in the classical world, you can't win. Um, not you can't win every time. That's for sure. And you can't. The more you play, if you play this, in fact, I might um, uh, That's you know you start exponentially increasing it basically. But there's a lovely graph somewhere. Ah, here it is. So after you've played it four times, you've got about a fifty percent chance of winning. But if you play it um, 20, I can't see the figure, but if you play it 25 times, you've got, only got a one in thousand chance of winning it. Yet in the quantum world, you win it every time forever. And I am going to explain on May the 3rd at six o'clock, uh, I'm going to explain how the quantum world does it. But I want you all out there to think about how it's doing something that's impossible. And but you'll you know, be explaining that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh no, but I think I might pass over to you every so often. No, no, I'll just claim <laughs> that I can't hear you. Yeah, well, let me comment on that and. Uh, it's true to say, Anne, you've been look involved with quantum computing for a year. Uh, 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 without you know, from the sidelines, from the sidelines, from the sidelines, yeah. Um, Anne very kindly uh, invites me to present to touring groups in uh, CSIRO, and so she's heard me present a good few times uh, and picked up on things. But I'm telling you, Anne, and this is a challenge. Honestly, I know when I explain, <laughs> it's no good crawling under the table. I, 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 I promise you, you will understand the solution. Because, so, yeah, so and, and anyway, see, yeah. can I ask? So on yeah. May 3rd, yes, so. is like next Tuesday? Yeah, next Tuesday. At 6 p.m.? Yeah. Our oops. We lost okay. Lorraine. Yeah, oh no, I know. I was just putting yeah, sorry. Oh. Um, so do we um are we meeting somewhere locally, like in a room? No. Physically? Oh, no. no. Not with me, but you are with your as your referee, you need two people in in the room wherever you are. You can play with your husband and child okay, or whatever so there we need to be two people at least in at a least room. yeah and then we were doing the game yes and and then see the well, see the way i've got you all now you know coming in and out yeah that's what we'll be doing at, on may the 3rd i'll be going over to your house or wherever you are you could be down the pub i don't care uh, in fact, that's a good idea. <laughs> the, problem, the problem is, if you go down the pub, you'll probably win all the games. <laughs> um, or I'll forget all the rules, that's for sure. No, forget all the rules. Yeah, get another, get another whiskey. 
another white wine, please. So uh, we, uh, yeah. So I'll be going over to you and Anne's team, Anne, and I'll be a liaison with you. And, and Lorraine's a referee, of course. She's being bribed at the moment. She's taking bribes, everybody in Africa. So she's trying to make some money out of this. <laughs> But, I think uh, Brian as well. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I give bribes to get people to do training for me, and I, I'll take bribes as well. Bribes no, are great. Yeah, it makes the world go round. So we're we're yeah, happy. To, is yeah, we're quantum physics. Yeah. So I'll be passing over to you and saying it's Anne. Will you start round one? Lorraine, will you start the show? Anne, will you start in West Australia? Lorraine, will you start in Zimbabwe? Um, Dr. Kumar, start in India. And Vic, start in Malaysia. And we'll all start playing. And then I'll cross over to your students or friends, whoever they are. And we may talk a bit of what, what strategy did you use for the first game. But there's four of you playing. And you'll be, you'll be set up you know, like we are now. Yeah. Except there'll be four of us. And so what we're doing when you pass to us is you'll be watching the game go on or you're... Uh, the game goes on for about 50 seconds. It's not long. Oh, well, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah, but what do you... So when you uh, pass to us, what do you want us to be doing or seeing oh, no, or showing? No, or... We just want you to play the game. And prob I probably will just leave you to play the game. And then I'll come over, Anne, did you win? Did your guys win or lose? Okay. And if you lost, then you're eliminated. And the whole game, Anne, which we haven't explained. Yes. Uh, I, think, I think Lorraine did before, but the whole game is of the four countries, after four rounds, we must have two countries who have not been eliminated. Okay, good luck with that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. So it's one of the other referees have, have just said the concur. I do apologize that every so often I have to look it's at okay. what's coming in. Yeah, but um, okay. yeah, so that's the way we'll do it. And um, and then so on Tuesday we'll play four rounds. It it should be a lot of fun. To yeah. be honest, I hope we lose or the students lose. So that you can see the important thing. What I will do is maybe interview one of the one of you for the one of the referees and say, you know, how what strategy did your students come up with? Or we'll get, it's all going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then when we've concluded, I will go through how it's done. Sounds like a trick, doesn't it? I get yeah, like a card trick. A card trick, yeah. I had one at my sleeve. Yeah, exactly. So I will explain it, and people won't follow the explanation, but that doesn't matter, and I'll be saying that. Because all that matters is that you know something real is happening that cannot be explained, and this is only a little game. People are now writing... Um, Quantum developers like Lorraine, Lorraine starting out on her journey, learning Python and Kiss Kiss. And soon she'll be writing programs for something else that do these amazing things. Now we know that we've got drones talking to each other. And I hate to say this, but quantum computing can be used for but as well as good, it can be used for bad. And the ethics, and I think, is a huge issue. And I know you do. You've brought it up many times. Yeah. Well, it's a tool, right? And any tool can be used for good or for not good. Well said. Exactly. And we need more people, you know, like we need more people, good people like Lorraine to start taking over because it really is a problem. One thing I've not even mentioned because this this is a field where you literally can talk for hours. But one thing I'm not mentioning, with quantum computing, you can get an unhackable code. Now, you might not think that's that big a deal, but it's a huge deal. Mm, because, that's huge. 
Yeah, I, I did my master's 20 or 22 years ago, I think it was, in e-commerce. And the first question was always in, in, um, so in electronic commerce, I have a master's. And the first question in security is always the same question. Can you write an unhackable code? And the answer was always, always no. Because whatever mathematical computation you apply to the code, it can be reversed. But in the quantum world, with a, oh, and you want the quantum, uh, Lorraine, have you spoke, have you looked into like QKD? Do you know what QKD is or? Uh, I've just come across it, um, not yeah. so much information on it. Yeah, quantum key distribution, honestly, Anne, it's so, uh, it's just intellect. These people who devised this, it's so clever. And um, I've written a short paper on it and a presentation on it, but it, it uses the random, the, the probabilistic side of quantum computing to, to, to mean you just cannot hack it. Now that's good, obviously, but it's bad. But number one, we catch a lot of criminals by them mm -hmm. communicating and we, we can hack into the, because um, cryptography is a funny thing. It's just, you're, you know, you've got good and bad. Good comes up with a better code. The bad come up with a better code. And then they all, yeah. It's a frog thing. Uh, but this isn't. This is. Uh, you I was going to say, this isn't yet, Eamon. This isn't yet. Uh, but we're still, we're, as emergent properties, we could come up with something still yet in the future that might be able to hack a Q, QKD or, uh, uh, or the quantum code, right? Yeah, well, well. Well, so you, you always say good notes, well done. And look, the answer, oh my God, the answer is probably no. It, because do you know when you collapse the wave function? It goes to either one or zero. So a qubit, if you measure it, goes to one or zero with equal, well, not always, but with equal probability. But can't you go back in time and figure no. it out before it collapsed? No. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about way I like that to time travel. <laughs> the the answer is almost certainly no. And when you at the moment, it's funny you should say that because in the training today, I mentioned that with a super. I said, talk, I was uh, talking, presenting to people who were 17 years old. And I was saying, in your lifetime, something wonderful is going to happen. And what I think it will be is that we'll be able to reverse a superposition. Exactly what we just mentioned. I reckon maybe in 60 years, 50 years, whatever, we'll be able to do that. When we can do that, life will never be the same. It just oh, won't. Life is never the same anyway, but it'll be even True. more different. Well, you're, you're from the U.S., so life's never been the same anyway. It's all different <laughs> over there. There's nothing the same ever. No. All right. Well, look, that's. I think we've shared the rules with everybody. Uh, yeah. uh, this is going, I, I hope you both knew, because, but it has been live streamed to around about 900 to 1,000 people. And what we need to do is keep sharing it so that everybody's ready on may the third six o'clock to tune in so i'd like to thank lorraine and Anne. and uh, i've had apologies from the other uh well the other two referees and um that we've got our panelists of six and we'll be discussing the technology as we have today so i'd like to thank you and with um i'm going to bow out with a bit of uh, video. Thank you very much, Lorraine and Anne. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.